Not too long ago, we got a preview of what the Silver Eyes graphic novel was going to look like, and today we get a official preview of what the Fazbear's Fright book number one, Into the Pit, is going to be like. The preview is just under 30 pages, and it will of course be linked out below, and while I won't be reading it in this video, I will be explaining it, summarizing it, so if you don't want it to be spoiled, again, link down below, it's not that long, give it a quick read, you can even skim through it, because I will be going over it. Uh, I just won't be reading it. So here we are on Rakuten Kobo. I've never used this site. I don't even know if it's safe. I probably shouldn't say that if I'm gonna be sending you guys here. <laughs> it's safe, okay? I've, I used, I looked on it last night. It's perfectly safe, trust me. Something that's awesome to see is that this book is the number one in fiction, kids, teen, ghost stories, and horror, and fiction for young adults, horror, and um, paranormal, so that's really, really awesome to see. You know, series, Five Nights at Freddy's, Scott, uh, Ellie Cooper, we have the description, which we have already been over. Um, if you missed our analysis of the Into the Pit cover in the description, it will also be linked down below, so you can go check that out as well. It seems like the price for these books always change from site to site. On this one, it says $6. I'm not entirely sure if that's accurate, because I'm pretty sure it's something else over on Amazon, but who knows? The price for these books is always a mystery, isn't it? Available the day right after Christmas, December 26th, of 2019 which again is only about two and a half months away so mark your calendars december 26 but of course the thing we are most interested about in this video is the preview now button click it and we get brought to the preview obviously what else would it do? Again, I will not be reading the preview, it's going to be linked down below, so go read it for yourself right now, pause the video, read it, and then you can come back. I will not be reading it, I'll just be summarizing it. Got the FNAF logo, Fazbear's Frights number one, Into the Pit. Obviously the authors, we get a table of contents, Into the Pit, to be beautiful, count the ways. Now obviously those are the chapters, meaning that there are three total chapters in this one book, which I'm pretty sure means that there's three different stories. And then here's the start to chapter one into the pit. Again, it's just under 30 pages, so go read it. I, it seems like a lot, but trust me, you're gonna fly through it because I've already read it, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait for you guys to read it. I'll sit here patiently. Again, pause the video if you need to. And then when you're back, we can summarize and theorize together. Okay, so by this point, you should have hopefully read the preview, which again, link down below if you haven't done that yet, because I'm gonna explain it all right now. So I just reread it because I actually read it for the first time last night, and oh my god, can I just tell you how hyped I am for this for this book? I nearly said for this game, for this book. It is so 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 good and it may not seem like that um just by the preview but hopefully it hooked you guys a little bit with that like time twist and oh my god i'm just super hyped now we are going to start to explain um just what happened in the book so obviously we have a few main characters and some settings that we should probably address first so for this chapter into the pit the main character is Oswald. I didn't catch his last name. I'm not sure if it was in the preview. Maybe I just skipped over it. But for now, his name is Oswald. He lives with his mom and dad. Sorry about that. He lives with his mom and dad in some sort of probably western town. Um, maybe in Hurricane, but it doesn't say explicitly, so we can't really say that for certain. We learned pretty early on that the town they're currently living in is not in the best state. It's really not the mill, which was apparently running basically the entire town, closed, and just like that, loads of businesses start to close, um, companies start to fall, and everyone basically moved out. Ben's family unfortunately could not leave because they had to um, treat their grandmother because she's going through a pretty rough time herself, so they had to stay in the town to take care of her. Oswald's best friend Ben also moved to a place, I believe in Florida, but even though I just reread the whole thing, I can't even remember. I'm pretty sure it's Florida, though. And so that has Oddwald uh, pretty down in the dumps. He, uh, his family is not doing the best money-wise, and also his friend has moved away, so he doesn't really have anyone to talk to. So, the setting. We've already gone through the characters. We know it is um, in a small town that's pretty run down. 
it is also the final day of school. It starts off with Oswald going to his final day of school, and I believe, um, I believe it said fifth grade. I'm pretty sure Oswald is 10 years old, and he's in, I think it said fifth grade. My god, I literally just reread the thing and I can't remember. Pretty sure it's fifth grade though. I know for a fact he's 10, I just am not entirely remembering the grade. It gives us a little backstory about um, Oswald's previous grades and his bullyment um, there. He gets bullied a little bit at the start of his, um, at the start of the first day, but everything else goes pretty smoothly, everyone gets released, and it's now the first day of summer vacation. Because of the state that Oswald's family is in, he doesn't get to see his mom um, as often as he would like. He's mostly spending time with his dad, because he works a part-time job, but his mom works um, 12 p.m. to 12 a.m., so he doesn't really get to see her at all um, in the evening. It's mostly in the morning. So Oswald wakes up the next day, and his mom is making some pancakes for him. They all sit down, they have a nice lovely breakfast, um, or maybe it was bacon. It's really not that important what they had for breakfast. Oswald's dad pitches him an idea of, um, you know, dropping him off at the library so he can spend some time there, and then he can go get some lunch and, um, lunch slash dinner, I guess you could say, at a place called Jeff's Pizza, which, uh, it sounds a little bit like Freddy's, Freddy's Fazbear's Pizza, but we're gonna get there pretty soon, don't you worry, boys. Oswald agrees to it, I guess you could say, um, and so he goes to the library, he gets his favorite book, and he, you know, after that he goes to Jeff's Pizza, he gets, uh, some orange soda and some cheese pizza, my man really knows, uh, the, the combo you get when you go to a pizzeria. Jeff is there to take his order, and he's described as pretty dead and zombie-like, he's not a zombie, guys, don't worry, he's not a zombie, at least I don't think, I, I have no clue. But he definitely does seem to be this universe's version of, um, of William Afton, which it doesn't even mention Afton in the preview, so don't even worry about that. Yeah, so Jeff himself is not doing the best either, but everyone gets their pizza in the end, and then Dad, Dad picks up Oswald, and they all return home. The next day, um, Oswald and his dad get into a pretty heated argument, so uh, it doesn't really end well for Oswald, so he basically storms into uh, <laughs> the library and Jeff's pizzeria with not good of an attitude. <laughs> Deciding he doesn't really want to face his dad when his dad eventually comes to pick him up, Oswald decides he will hide in the ball pit in Jeff's pizzeria. That's right, guys. It literally says he gets into the pit. Which is the title of the book. And for those of you who haven't read the preview, again, you probably should have done that by now, but if you haven't, this is where it starts to get a little freaky deaky schmeaky. When Oswald goes into the pit, literally and figuratively, he pops out the other end in a completely different time period. Don't worry, it's not that drastic. He's not like in the Middle Ages or something. No, he, he rewinds back um, we don't know how many years, but to a place and time where it's still Jeff's Pizzeria, but it's a pizzeria, pizzeria? <laughs> pizzeria before Jeff took over. And that pizzeria is none other than Freddy's. Now something that is awesome, and I don't know if this is going to be true or not, but something that just amazes me is that this Freddy's location seems and is described as very 80s themed, very 90s, because again, this is during the 80s and 90s where he gets sent back in time, so maybe, just maybe, I'm not saying this is official, don't take this out of context, but just maybe, this could be the location for FNAF 7, or FNAF 9, whatever you want to call it. The teaser that is currently on scottgames.com could be a reference, either a reference or a, di or a direct link to this book. I'm not saying that it is, that, but that is just a little bit of speculation, so keep that in mind when the book releases. There, Oswald doesn't really know what to think of the situation. He does see versions of Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica. He doesn't mention Foxy, which is kind of strange, but he does see versions of Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica on stage performing. He sees uh, kindergarten kids just running around, party hats having fun, and eventually he bumps into someone who we learned is his name is Chip. Maybe L Chip? Maybe that could be another reference? Chipper? Who knows? His name is Chip and he runs into um Oswald in an accident. They exchange names. 
and Chip introduces uh, Oswald to his friend Mike. Another parallel there, Mike, Michael, could be, maybe. <laughs> From there, they play a few rounds of skee-ball, and then uh, Oswald really realizes the situation he's in, and kind of wants to find his dad, ironically, because he seems maybe he is the only way to get Oswald out of this weird state he has found himself in, and that is the end of the preview. Didn't it hook you? Wasn't that good? Oh my god, I'm so, so excited for this book to come out. I just... Oh, December 26, mark your calendars. So obviously this is a very different premise to all the other books that we've gotten. Nope, this way. Um, these aren't good examples, but the original three are down there. You can kind of, you can see the top of them. Obviously this is a very different premise to those three books and my dogs are barking. Even my dogs can't wait for the book, guys. Mark your dang calendars! As I was trying to say, obviously this book has a very different premise to the first three, and it's also the first one to not be in the uh, in the trilogy. So it's going to be very interesting to see exactly where it goes, um, not only for the rest of the book series, but also if it has any more connections to the game. Because obviously these three gave us like Henry and William Afton and um, Circus Baby, so maybe, just maybe, we're gonna get more game clues from these next few from these next few books. That is it. Again, December 26th, mark your calendars. The preview for the seventh million time is going to be linked down below. So if you want to read it again and again and again, feel free to. The Amazon page will also be linked down below if you want to go and pre-order the book. Again, the price changes from site to site, so I'm not entirely sure what it is, but it seems to be around seven to nine dollars, which Ain't too bad, I'm not gonna lie, for three three stories in one book. That's pretty good. So, thanks everyone so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.